Hello everyone. We're here to talk to you today about a needle and syringe program project that was developed to reduce bloodborne diseases among young people aged 14 to 25 who inject drugs in the Northern New South Wales Local Health District. We're happy to answer any further questions you may have at the end of our presentation. I'll hand over to Fatima, the head of the project research team to start. Thanks, Elena. Today I will discuss on the background of Needle Syringe Program for Project the Significance of Related Public Health Issue and Project Duration. Through sharing of injecting equipment, people who inject drugs have become a high risk group for blood borne infections, including hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. According to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, 45 percent of people who inject drugs in, the, in Australia were diagnosed with hepatitis C in 2019. HIV prevalence among people who inject drugs increased from 1.7% in 2015 to 2.3% in 2019. According to the National, National Household Survey News, Northern New South Wales has the highest proportion of people who inject drugs, 26% in New South Wales. In New South Wales, there, were, there was 10% increase in the proportion of young people aged 18 to 24 who, inject, who used illicit, illicit drugs, the highest increase of any age group. Because of this recent prevalence of risk factor, a scope review was carried out to find evidence on, on the efficacy and feasibility of needle and syringe program for young people who inject drugs. Overseas findings showed that there were significant changes in blood on disease transmission in cities and remote areas with implementation of NSP, NSP. The data of which you can see on the screen, Australian government has been extensively promoting needle and syringe programs with interesting data and that forms a part of national rationale of this project. 81 million spent needle and syringe program of over nine years saved the government a total of 513 million in healthcare costs related to blood borne disease control and treatment. Now I will invite Elena to talk about the project stakeholders and finding process. Thank you for those interesting statistics, Fatima. The needle and syringe project program project consisted of a number of stakeholders to, to be seen on the left side of the screen, each with varying roles and interests. Principal internal stakeholders included program management team comprising of the director who sets goals and objectives, determined models of service delivery and risk management strategies, the health promotion lead who developed and implemented strategies to educate people who injected drugs on injecting behaviours and bloodborne disease transmission, the public health lead who developed and implemented strategies to ensure equity in service provision, and human resource advisor who developed plans on hiring and managing staff for the project. The workforce involved in the project played a vital role in providing services to achieve project goals and objectives. And these included health promotion officers, public health officers, epidemiologists, social workers, and counsellors. External stakeholders in our project were Ministry of Health were responsible for allocating funds from the federal government to harm reduction interventions like needle and syringe programs, analyze service provision data, SDI programs units, the Northern New South Wales Local Health District, Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Services, guided strategies to improve access for Indigenous people, Multicultural New South Wales, guided strategies to improve access for culturally and linguistically diverse communities. The New South Wales Police, police and needle and syringe programs providers needed to establish formal lines of communication as drug dealers were involved in illegal activities in the vicinity of the needle and syringe programs. And then there were non-government organisations like Hepatitis New South Wales, ACOM and Positive Life New South Wales that influenced the needle and syringe programs policies through research and advocacy. The program received funding from the New South Wales Ministry of Health. These funds were allocated from the federal government's budget that distributes funds across public health priorities and interventions. 
Funding ob obtained was distributed among operational activities such as provision of needles and syringes, counselling and testing services, staff salaries, staff training, building facilities, technology equipment, and needle and syringe program database development. Apart from these, funding was allocated to contingency plans such as risk management, increasing the number of peer workers, and expanding support for culturally and linguistically diverse communities. The, the head of the promotion, he, health promotion team, Hassan, will now elaborate on the services we provided. Thanks, Alana. So the primary aim of the program was to reduce the transmission of bloodborne diseases among young PWIT aged 14 to 25 in Northern New South Wales Local Health District. To achieve this, the program has strategic goals and objectives in line with the Ottawa Charter Principles for Health Promotion as seen in the mid-bottom part of the poster. This involves developing personal skills of individuals, creating supportive environments, reorienting health services and strengthening community actions and building healthy public policies. Now I'll discuss about the models of services used in the project. Uh, which included a fixed site facility where PWID could exchange injecting equipment and use other services like testing and counseling, automatic dispensing machines that are mechanical devices, dispensing sterile injecting equipments and other services like bus and vans traveling with injecting equipment, usually with regular hours of stopping at designated places and with a regular route. A number of services and equipment were provided in the NSP outlets and outreach program, which uh, included needles, syringe, condoms, lubricants, and disposal equipments, health education resources and programs like lectures, seminars, webinars, workshops, postures, brochures, and information cards. And then we had referral services to welfare, community, and health services, feedbacks consisting of five syringes and a disposal unit, and counseling and behavior change services. A peer education program was developed to promote healthy injecting behaviors, which involved 18 self-identified LGBTQ peer workers distributing materials to their social networks members using the skills and materials gained through training provided to them. And this included feedbacks, uh, small cards outlining the locations of NSP outlets and STD testing sites, posters depicting the adverse effects of blood wound diseases brochures about blood wound diseases that can arise from sharing needles and DVDs that contained videos of how to adopt safe injecting practices. Now I will hand over to Tanvi, the head of the public health team, to discuss how she ensured equitable NSP services for a wide range of communities. Thanks, Hassan. The Aboriginal Health Impact Statement was used to ensure poor health outcomes among young Aboriginal people who inject drugs are carefully considered in program planning. Systematic assessment and examination of the needle syringe programs was carried out to identify enablers, barriers, and linkages in relation to Aboriginal health and to develop programs aimed at increasing engagement of Indigenous communities and stakeholders. In line with New South Wales Plan for Culturally and Linguistically Diverse Communities 2019 to 2023, we developed strategies to ensure equitable, culturally safe, and high quality NSP services for CALD communities. This included provision of interpreter services in all NSP outlets, developing health education resources in relation to needle sharing that meets the need of culturally diverse outcomes, providing resources to improve cultural responsiveness of staffs working within NSP, recognizing the expertise of CAL staffs and encouraging them to lead NSP projects for CAL people. Now I'll let Hassan continue the presentation by describing how the project was monitored and evaluated. Thanks, Sanvi. So the evaluation of the project was carried out in three stages, impact process and outcome based on stakeholder ratings, data for notifiable conditions, information management system, and SIMS and keyword code signings by consumers. Some of the key performance indicators for evaluation are shown on screen. A full list can be found at nswnsp.org.au. So as a concluding note, I'd like to say that our patient-centered and equitable NSP services will facilitate bringing down health gaps that correlates to bloodborne diseases resulting from sharing drug equipments in marginalized communities. Findings from this project can also be used to improve NSP services in the future to meet the demands of a range of culturally and linguistically diverse communities. Through this program, we advocate for more research on the social and environmental risk factors that facilitates sharing of drug injecting equipments, 
so that intervention to reduce or remove them can be planned and implemented. Thanks for taking the time to listen to our presentation today. If you have any questions, please email them to me at 1997 at student.questionsdini.edu.au.